Good morning. Last week, we heard the fascinating and almost unbelievable story of Elisha and the Arameans. I love this story so much. I mean, who wins wars by feeding the enemy? It's hard to know how to summarize this story. It's just so full of so many crazy and remarkable things. So briefly, Elisha was a prophet in Israel. The capital of Israel at this time was Samaria. Aram, a neighboring country, was at war with Israel. Elisha, the prophet, repeatedly warned the king of Israel about Aram's every next move, foiling Aram's plans time after time. This, not surprisingly, made the king of Aram extremely angry. So he sent spies to locate Elisha. When he discovered Elisha in Dothan City, not to be confused with Gotham City, he sent horses and chariots by night to surround them. When Elisha's servant got up early the next morning and saw the Aramean army all around them, he said, Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? That's not so surprising. I think possibly many of us wake up in the morning and say the same thing as we face the day. Elisha answered, Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And he asked God to open his servant's eyes so that he could see and God answered this prayer, and the servant saw hills full of horses and chariots of fire. This is spine tingly. And it makes me think, what would we see if our eyes were opened and we could see God and all he is doing around us? As the army was approaching, Elisha asked God to strike them with blindness, which God did. Then Elisha led this army of blind soldiers straight to Samaria, straight to the king that they had been trying to conquer for so long, Seeing them, the king of Israel was pretty excited, and he eagerly asked Elisha, shall I kill them? Elisha's response was, no, don't kill them, feed them. So the king of Israel fed this enemy army a great feast and sent them home. The final sentence in the story is, so the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel, stopped raiding Israel's territory. And I I just think that is so amazing. I would say this is a quintessential win-win situation. Nobody got killed, everybody had a feast, and both sides had peace. That's beautiful. Here are some principles from the story. Number one, God is at work. We need to ask God to open our eyes to see what he is doing and join him in it. And when we do, remarkable things can happen. Number two, things aren't always as they seem. God is up to something. Our real enemy is Satan and not the people around us. And Satan wants to intimidate us, and he wants to get us to give up, and he wants to get us to hate the people who actually aren't our real enemy. God, on the other hand, wants to open our eyes so that we don't give up in despair and so that we don't act out of hatred or disdain towards people, but rather see them and ourselves the way he does. In God's economy, we can afford to feed our enemies because, actually, the real enemy is not them, but Satan. This is from Romans chapter 12. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And this is a story where Elisha led Israel in overcoming evil with good. And number three, we are in a spiritual battle. Satan is battling for the control of our minds because he wants to discourage us and get, him, and get us really powerless. But God doesn't want us living in fear or despair or hatred. So what we see, what we gaze on, what we fix our gaze on, makes a huge difference in how we live and how we treat others and in how, even how we feel. So by meditating on scripture, we can recalibrate our minds. For example, we can meditate on, as you know, uh, what this one is, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, about how we can come to Jesus, learn from him, and find rest for our soul. This past week, I have been focusing on Hebrews 4, 16, which says, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And that has helped me move from discouragement to encouragement this past week. Finally, the author of Hebrews says this, let us fix our gaze on Jesus, 
the one who initiates and grows our faith. Amen.